Greetings folks, today we will be painting a Tyranid Termagant with f spine fists in the style of High Fleet Uriel, which is a splinter fleet I made based off of High Fleet Gorgon. As well, personalize your own miniatures, and for Kill Team and Warhammer 40k itself. This one specifically will be for Kill Team. As you can see, I personalized this miniature with some pieces from a Crute head, which is currently right here. I snipped off the most of it and put it onto the tail to give it a nice sort of quill look. And then I threw some on the very top carapace right here near the shoulder plates. And this is all based in Corax White. To start things off, we are going to paint the exoskeleton with Death Guard Green. Thin down just a little bit. To thin it down, we just add a little bit of water. This will help it smoothly apply onto the miniature and get into all the cracks. Almost make it as if it is a wash. Generally, we will apply about two coats of this. On top of our Corax White, it will give us a nice sort of like deathly lime green almost, as you start to see going on with it. But be careful not to paint the exoskeleton. If a little bit gets on the exoskeleton, that is fine. We can just touch it up later. So High Fleet Gorgon in the 40k lore is a Tyranid High Fleet that is mostly com comprised of very on-the-spot adaptative creatures, alongside them having a lot of miasma and toxic based weaponry, toxic blood, toxic yeah, everything really, a lot of spore clouds that can implant into their enemies from a distance and cause sufficient amount of internal bleeding and death upon contact. So, they're very... They are one of the fleets that specializes in virulent attacks. Virulent meeting its viruses and diseases and lots of natural poisons and gases emitted from them. So, for this particular one, we are mostly going with the fact that when they die, they will ooze out a black ooze. It kind of works like the blood of a xenomorph, but not as acidic, but definitely causes long-term uh, pathogens to spread throughout the host that it is attached to. And it's pretty much the overall theme for this little fleet I made based off of one of Medusa's sisters. And doing it like this also helps me come up with a better color scheme with a little bit of imagination. Honestly, doing something like what I did here, being inspired by things of myth and legend, alongside some reading of the lore in 40k, can easily assist you in creating your own Tyranid army, or like Space Marine Legion, or anything really. It's a good way to approach how you want them to look like to begin with. Besides, obviously, finding a color palette that best suits them. Kinda turn my light a little bit there, my bad. So we're just gonna spread it all over our miniature. Just about done. Alright, with all that applied, we'll let it dry for about a minute or two and get back to the rest of the process on the exoskeleton. 
All right, now that is done drying, as you can see, it comes out looking like a very nice, almost kind of orc green. I see that looks pretty good so far. Now we're going to hit the whole thing with a good old baled tan green. This will help make our green a little darker so that way when we start dry brushing and highlighting, it would show up a lot better. And it will make all the crevices here much darker. So we're just going to slather all of this across our miniature. good heavy amount. Not too heavy, obviously, otherwise it would pull, pool way too much everywhere and smear some of the colors. Looking pretty good so far. Put some on the head right here. Now finish up our coat and then we will let it dry. Alright, we'll give that a minute or two before we go on to our next step. Alright, now for our next step when it comes to dry brushing and highlighting, we are going to use a mixture of one part of our Death Guard Green and two parts of Wraith Bone. This will give it a nice sort of oops. This will give it a nice sort of like greenish beige look onto all of the edges on this miniature. It will be most prominent compared to the rest of it. Alright, now we're just gonna dry brush it. Using this, we are going to dry brush the whole miniature. Just dry brush it very lightly. You don't need too much of this. You just need it enough to dry brush the miniature as a whole. And really pop out those fine details. Just a little bit more. As you see, a lot of our detail is now becoming lighter, and all of our darker recess colors is staying true to the rest of it. Miss this spot right here. All right. Now we're gonna put this down. Clean our brush. Try not to drop our brush. Now we're going to touch up all of the vents right here, on the arms, the weapon, and the chest right here, and part of the mouth with a known oil gloss. This will help give it a nice fine detail of its black, miasmic, poisonous, toxin blood that this faction is known for. 
I'm just going to put it in each of the deep parts right here. This will also help darken what shade we already have on the miniature. We'll also put on, we'll put some of it on the spikes up here. Into the little vent holes right here. Same for the ones on the head. As you see, it's already starting to pick out the details that we already set forth and make them even darker. Make it a nice blackish green. Alright, we'll let that dry for about a minute or two, then we'll start to our second phase. For our next step, we are going to color our carapace here, Wraithbone. So no. This will help to complement the current color scheme we have going on with our very various shades of green. A nice kind of bony beige will help. Will help to fit in with the rest of our miniature. Now we're only painting the exoskeleton, the hooves and the guns we will leave for later. Just paint it all over it. just about done now we have to touch up the leg part the leg panels right here just very gently now Got a little over there, that's alright, you can just wipe it off with your finger. Alright, we're going to let that dry for about a minute or two before we go on to our second part. Alright, now that that is dry, our second step is to get a little bit of Seraphim Sepia on our brush. And we are going to put it all over the hooves and the exoskeleton. Just put it all over it. You could be a little messy with it too. You'll add a little more life into it. A little more of a naturalistic appearance. This will make it sort of like a dried up kind of weathered bone look which is perfect for what we're doing with this guy later
All right, with that applied, we will let it dry for the time being. Now with that dry, you can start seeing it's giving us a very nice color composition and contrast between the colors, giving us a very warm, full kind of green tone. Now for the carapace, we are going to be drying, drying, dry brushing a little bit of Corax white to offer a little bit of chitin, like debris and shelling and textures on top of it. Also, hopefully, to give us a nice little color pattern. Now, you don't need a lot of the white, you just need enough to dry brush the miniature with. Now, usually, when dry brushing Tyranids or other things with a lot of panels, you want to go against the edges and not with it. This will spread it downward and actually cover most of your edge. Doing it upwards will help it catch to the edges and give it a nice streak look. Now we're just going to brush it upwards. Now the reason why we're doing it with the Corex White is just to make the edges a little lighter. Because then we're going to be hitting it with a darker color soon. Once that is done, go ahead and get some of your Death Guard Green and put it on your dry brush as well. And then brush it alongside the panels as well, just very lightly, just a soft dry brush. This will help tone the white that we've placed on it alongside some of the bone color, just a slight tint of green. Now it's starting to look like a bone beige. Perfect. Really lightly. And now for the finishing touches. We are going to get some of a thin down black Templar contrast and apply it to the weapons, a little bit on the hooves and claws, and on the tail spike back here, alongside on top of the little spikes we have on the carapace right here. The paint that we are using is already somewhat thin layering, so that we'll catch up whatever colors underneath. And by us thinning it down, it will make it almost like a gray pigment. So we will pick up a lot more of the color that we have underneath. Much better. Than if we were to put it on fully. As you see from that green we had earlier, it's starting to give it like a very nice dark green look. Like a very dark green. And then when we apply our thin coat on the hooves here, it gives us a very nice dark brown modded look. Modeled. Alright, it's pretty much good to go now. For the finishing touches, we just need a little bit of white for the teeth, and yellow for the eyes. For the eyes, I'll be getting out my nail detailing tool. This would help pick out the teeth a lot easier than doing it with a brush. Get a little bit of our Corax white. Just go alongside the teeth, so it'll help pick out the ridges.
gonna chuck the miniature. <laughs> My bad. And lastly, for the eyeballs, we will use our Flash Gits Yellow. Just gently apply it onto these eye sockets. Make sure you catch the very tip of them. Since our black already makes the eyes very concave. And just with that subtle touch, our miniature is complete. There we are. One Tyranid Termagant from High Fleet. Ugh, I always mess up the name. <laughs> Uriel. Now from this on, as you see I already put a little crude skull on it. You can start basing it with like, hmm, maybe like mud, maybe some snow, sand, rock. Really depends on what you're feeling for this Tyranid. I would recommend for the color scheme we have going on here to apply a nice sandy tone on the bottom and then sort of dry brush a little bit of red on it. This would help give it like a feel for like Mars or um, like clay beaches. Or you could just put snow on it. Snow would really work against the rest of the color scheme we have going on here. Other than that, thank you for watching the video, and you have a great day, folks.